tonight we are in Jason Shear's shop and we are looking at the number 76 car, the new number 76 car. Um, and the, some of the panels are off. Down in Lake Bed, we never really got a chance to kind of peek at some of the technology and what you're doing in this car. And right out of the gate, this is one of the first things. So what do you got? What do you got here? Well, that was probably the start of the new design on the car was the portals. Um, I had heard Quinn talking about them. I so obviously... Quinn from 74 Weld. Um, and, and it's a super cool story. So this is great. So Cameron Steele got to drive Cody Wagner's car about four or five years ago. And he said, hey, would you go out to the hammers with me and drive the car so I can get a feel for what you guys are doing? I want to, I had won it in like 2018, 2019. And Cameron's like, take me out there and show me how you drive it. So I'd never driven Cody's car, got in it, went out and drove it, came back and said, you're cheating, Cody. And Cody had portals Cordy in had, that. Cody had IRS, IF, or uh, yes. IFS, IRS. Yep. And it had Quinn 74 weld portals. Yep. Right. And so this is basically uh, three gears in there. Um, well, it's actually four. There, it's it looks a lot like a gear drive. We'll look at one back yeah. there when we're but done. But it, it, it's got it's got a, a drive that comes in on the CV, and it's got two driven gears, and then the the. And what's the ratio on this? So mine are different. Um, mine are one forty five, and I think Lauren and Vaughn and the Broncos are running a one sixty seven. And something you got going is you have portals on the front with a one four five reduction. Yep. And you're running three seventy three front gears. Yep. Um, and being that it's rear engine. It is a low pinion, 10 inch flip to be a high pinion, yep. where it's like 370 gears, right? It's a right? 370, 370. yeah. 370, um, but you don't have portals in the rear, so in order to match with the 1.45 reduction, you have a 543s. Yep. And the same thing, that is a rear, uh, it's low a low pinion, pinion 10 flip, flip to high down. pinion. Yep. There's a lot of ways you could do that, right? You could yeah. actually run similar gear ratios, but then do it in the transfer case. You could, you could but, have a reduction from the yep. input and the outputs in the transfer case as well, but you're, so, okay, we'll start at the front of the car, we'll work yeah. way back, we're yeah. talking about the portals, so. Um, this the, is the biggest game changer. These are the live industry. valve. Live valve is. And what size is that shock? It's a Fox <laughs> shock a four bypass. Inch, four inch live valve. Four inch um, live valve. And live valve means that inside the car on the dash, you can adjust your compression, your rebound for different areas of the course. Right. right? So we have a rock setting, we have a nuisance rock setting, and then we have a desert setting. We actually also have a qualifying setting and some things like that. Okay. But so those three are the or three four primary ones. And it's just you click between them and yep. it automatically goes there. Rub so the coil over in the back, uh, big bypass, big tubes, yep. keep everything cool live valve and you actually did use that during the race it's Absolutely. not a gimmick it's not a gimmick it's no, not it's, like the knob on the ranch it's, it's incredible it's incredible it's game changing and it's and all the way around huge alcon brakes okay which i just love that's my favorite. and then what rack do you have it's a seven inch trophy truck rack from how um so it's a how rack it's a okay. how rack and, yeah um you, know, you got your xeon winch tucked up in here yep. and that's the platinum that's so, the platinum that's big because you can disconnect the drum remotely with the remote control the run up to the rock you want to go and then yep. click it back and then in click it back in and control. go you never have to come back to the car yeah. and latch it back in so the new chassis um tell us about the chassis so keith beam and i worked on the chassis design and he built it all um not only did he you know design the whole thing have it all laser cut out all the stuff was already pre-bent it was basically like a, a rector set if you will yeah. Yeah. that we had to put together and he did it on incredible jigs um, Matt Taylor was involved in helping us with the jigs and a lot of the other parts, but it is, you know, two inch main chassis with like one and three quarter inch supporting tubes. Um, the bottom and then of it's all. you said the whole bottom section you sleeved with 7075 or you, you yep. filled the tube with 7075 aluminum. And that prevents like the rocks from dinging the tubes, but Denting you know, it, it is yeah. really, it's a super, super good structure. Like I used to, you know, feel the other one tweak a little bit when you were this hitting G-outs. Rigid. It's rigid and it so, lets the car do what it's supposed I'm to I'm standing do. here, I'm looking in, two-seater car. Yep. Um, what's this right in here? I can see, so this must be, uh, here's your newly designed transfer case and the, the drive line comes right through the center of the car yep. up to the front bulkhead, right? Exactly, yeah. So it's, it's almost flat. It's got almost no angle left in the drive lines in the car, which is really cool. 
And, so. and a key piece of this race car is this new transfer case. Right? Yeah, and the design, right? So I don't know of another car right now that has the driver's side drive line. Everything is run to the passenger side. In fact, side. let's walk around yeah. to the driver's side because we can see that because the panel's off, right? And there, there is a reason so, for it. Is Burger's really and tall. And as you're going by here, you can see here's the portal with the outer taken off because you checked out the gears. Um, but right here is what we're talking about, right? Yep. So if you get down there, you can see That's that. That's directly under the driver's seat. Yeah. So the, that transfer case offsets the rear drive line to directly under your seat, and then, and then it moves to the back. And I then, don't know if the camera can really do justice to it, but you can see how my seat's at the height that I needed it. But Burger's seat is way lower because... Oh, that's funny. He's like five inches lower than you. Yeah, and it's because he's like he's five inches guy. taller than me now. He's probably yep. like four inches. But I don't know. He might be five inches well, taller Well, Burger than couldn't drive this car because you no. couldn't get the seat low enough because the drive line's right underneath your right. seat. But I mean, you could have literally built the car the opposite way with no difference. Yeah. Right? You could do the same thing going the other way. But You're this right. was the way yeah. to do it with a tall co-driver. And so the inside is pretty simple here. you got the MoTeX system for the motor, right? Yep. yep. And then... Uh, I noticed there's a 4321, meaning you have a 4L80 in this 4L80, thing, right? yep. Jim at ATO. And I'm looking at that thing. It is not a reverse manual valve body. No. Standard valve Standard body. Standard valve body. From Jim at ATO. Same one Brendan Thompson runs. And yep. He really has those he's got crannies dialed. dialed in, right? Um, now he's got them dialed. We had a few. Yo, it took a while to his, get dialed It is a good program. Yep. Um, same size shocks in the rear, just a longer package. Um, oh, same shocks with the same live valves. Yep. And then I, I see the engine tucked in here. So what engine is it? So it's, exactly? it's a Ford small block. It's Windsor based. Oh, so it is a small block. Yeah. Okay. It's a Dugan's race engine. Um, they build it. How many cubic inches is 463 it? 463 cubic inches. Okay. Um, you know, it's it's got the eight stack on it. It's got you know, a dry sump in it. It's it's a really good package. What it has that makes it special is these cylinder heads from uh, Ford Performance. They were called D3 heads. Doug Yates designed them. And they just have an incredibly long torque range. And that's the difference from like what I was used to from an LS motor to go to the Ford package is that the torque was available for like an extra thousand RPMs, which is crazy when you drive it. Well, and it, what's the rev limiter on this thing? Uh, it's, it's actually, we've got it down pretty low. It's 7,000 RPM rev limiter. <laughs> so pretty low, well, 7,000? I mean, there's a lot. Yeah. You can, you, you know, these things probably ran in like NASCAR 9,500 RPMs, right? For that same cylinder. So I'm um, seeing radiator just right above the engine at yep. an angle, right? And it doesn't look like a giant radiator. It keeps the engine cool just fine, huh? So, uh, shout out to PWR because that is the most efficient radiator you can get. And there's some things that you can notice about it just by looking at it is it has very small tanks. It does. So it's got a lot more radiator surface area than because the, the tanks aren't competition has. Because so you're not carrying around a bunch of extra fluid that's not efficient. And, and do, you, do you run um, actual antifreeze or do you run that, that synthetic blend <laughs> that people so use? So I use... Um, well, it's kind of complicated, but we use water wetter, which yeah. is, is interesting because what it really does is it takes the surface tension of the water out, and so it allows it to stick to the surface better. Um, but we've actually been playing with VP's um, synthetic like race stuff they've got, and it's, it's, it's actually incredible, too. So it can go to them, a much higher boiling point. Yeah, and um, it's a good system. So exhaust, uh, I see you got two mufflers huge on the car. Mufflers. Right? Didn't start with those, but I couldn't hear anything in there. So now we have huge mufflers. It's really nice and quiet. Um, um, not very sexy if you have you know, no noise, but it's much better. I'm noticing this right here. The fuel cell basically is like a, a cup wrapping around the spare tire, right? right? And underneath it. So full custom fuel cell. That means you got a crazy custom bladder inside of this thing to crazy make it work. Crazy custom bladder. The design. How, how many incredible. gallons can you hold? Fifty in this gallons thing? of usable. That is fifty gallons. It doesn't even look like. I know. You know, it doesn't even look like there's a big tank here. And if you notice, like the old car, the the tank was like above this line. And we lowered it so way it down. Drops the center of gravity down here. And it's a great place to do it. The sway bar is actually only a couple inches further back than my old car, and we were able to get all that room out of it. I'm noticing your rear drive line's got a little bit of a race rash on it yeah. there, Jason. Yeah, we um, hit it a so few times. just trailing arm um, with triangulated uppers, and something I'm seeing on this car different than some other cars is a typical trailing arm. Your shocks are pretty close to the end, maybe like 20% up the arm. But I'm looking at yours, and your your main coilover is almost dead center of the trailing arm. Yeah, it is. Well, it's probably just in front of it. It's 1.6 ratio on the coil on the bypass, which is 
basically what Fox wants that piston to be for the right shaft speeds of it. And so there was a lot of work between Fox getting us the specs on what they wanted and us building the trailing arm and mounting the shocks in that position so that I mean, at your works. rear wheel too, you get a ton of travel, ton of travel out of that. Travel. I mean, we do you even know travel. what travel you have at the wheel? Yeah, I think there's a uh, 28 inches of rear wheel travel on it. And that's a, what is that, a 16, a 16 inch shock? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that, that would make sense. You can and that's just because it's strapped, but yeah, you can yeah. get, I mean, basically, you get 32 total if you just let it go all the way. But it, no, it's not. It's like more like 30. You're running 40-inch uh, BFGs. And if you look at the sp at the the gas tank, it's got a little bit of room in here. And that's oh, because you, it's oh, designed to fit look, a 42. Look at this right here. You see that little space. So that means you could put a 42. You know, there's a couple racers racing on 42s this year. Oh, Brendan, yeah. I think Paul Wolf had 42s. We'll be Obviously. on 42s someday. I think yeah. they're coming. So... Um, and then your wheels, you're running Vision wheels, and these are forged wheels? Forged beadlocks. Um, yeah. You know, Vision's made just a great wheel for this package. It's light and strong. Um, God, it ran on a flat tire. Oh, uh, that tire front is left is flat. Good. Yeah. That front left is flat. For six rock trails, so I got to in, in gotta it wasn't it's just good. a flat tire, though, right? You have BFG uh, liners tire in liners there. in here, which is basically like another tire inside of the yeah, tire. Yeah, it's only about, you know, maybe about this, this high, big, yeah. but it it holds pressure in it as well. Unfortunately, I flatted both of them when I got the flat, but it held it up and that was enough, you know, to keep it going. So, gotcha. Um, yeah. We got the jack on that side. I was gonna burger. say, what jack do you use? Dude, AGM jack is great. AGM it's been, jack. It's been great. What we did too- Looks we, like it's quick release on a pin comes out Yeah, quick. it comes out quick and easy. Um, we modified the, the snout on it so that you can use the same one inch impact socket on it as you do on the lug nuts. Oh, so it's just one thing. I think they were yeah. kind of designed for the UTVs at a three quarter inch. And uh -huh. so they, they make an adapter now to make it a one inch and that way you can you can just have the same and impact then, socket. Talking about your transfer case, so people think of rock crawling uh, of having low range and high range. And so this is just a straight box. There's no neutral, there's no in, there's no out. There's just one gear. What is the ratio of the transfer case? Well, you can adjust it. So By switching by gears. By switching gears, yeah. which is really easy. So SCS makes it. It's based on their straight through transfer case, but we modified it because we wanted to get the driveline angle to be straight. And you and worked with SCS and said, this is the dimensions on, I want this much offset. I want 14 I want this inches side. So offset. So 14 inches from center to, the, to yep. the offset going to the rear end. And in order to do that, right, the gears are only a certain size. And so luckily like Ben Bauer came over one day yeah. and I was like, I don't know how to do it. it. If you put five gears in a row, you end up at 17 point something. Yeah. And he's like, well, they don't all have to go in a straight line. You can move one up and move one down and get your center line where you wanted it. Oh, that, I got you. That got yeah. the wheels turning. And yeah. I was like, oh, I know how to do it one day, you know? And it was like, you go, okay, cool. And so we, we worked through that and, and got and it that, exactly that where we wanted What's it. the reduction in that? We're running it at like 137. And so, so everybody used to get um, a one at, the one five Atlas yep. and they'd run it in low in the Atlas and one five with a 4L80 and that extra fourth gear pulls you on the flats. And then you did something else a little different in your 4L80 is that you have a lower first gear than the 4L80, lower first right? gear, Yeah, and Cohen um, really perfected that lower first gear so that it's strong. I think there were some issues with it at the early stages of it, but now they've got it dialed and basically you can run first gear in the rocks ends up being the same ratio as what we had with the 1.5 and a 248 first in the trans. Now with the 298 and the 137, we're actually a hair lower. Um, and your top speed is still in the yeah. 130, 140 range. Yeah, we're still in the 140 range. And so. then, uh, and you're running the rock trails. So this brings me to the torque converter, right? Yeah. So without having low range in the in the tran in the transfer case, you're going to heat that training when you're crawling on the rocks if you're going slow. What do you even know what the stall is in the torque converter? Or? Yeah. Well, we run a little bit lower stall. Um, I like the feel of it, um, but. You know, we're at 4,000, a lot of guys are at 5,000. Um, it's a debatable thing. I actually have driven it with both. But stall, stall makes heat. When you're crawling, the higher the stall, the more heat. It makes heat if you're using it at full throttle, right? If yeah. you're using it at part throttle, I it's a little you, bit I, easier. You are a it. finesse driver too, so <laughs> you're not gonna And we do have a heat. torque converter output temp, so we can see what the converter's at versus the pan temp. And, and we've hit like, you know, some pretty substantial converter 
temps, but it's all within range. Like we've hit 320, which isn't like crazy, but you, you are using some, you're building some heat in the converter. In, in the MoTeC system, it'll tell you, does it, it flash light when it's getting yeah, hot? Or? Yeah, it comes on. It, it still shows blue at 320 and then like it'll go to amber or yellow at like, gotcha. at like 360 or uh -huh. 350, I think. And then like over that, it starts flashing red and lets you know that you got a problem. So yeah, it's, it's cool to have all those controls in there and, and we're using it. Like we're, we're paying attention to like, okay, the converter's hot. Let's make sure we're not sh early, sh like short shifting it and running on the converter and keeping it above the stall so that it's getting the fluid flow through the, through the converter and also back through the coolers. Well, this thing, the custom transfer case, the portal boxes just in the front, you know, other yep. people used them all around. And the fact that Quinn built these from 74 Weld, brand new car, new set, new to you, you went out there and just ripped King of the Hammers with it. And, uh, well, let's look at these things on the table right here. We'll look at the gears. Yeah. And uh, you can see you there. would think, hey, that much horsepower, that much stress break some gears but well, the gears uh, are pretty massive too you know right? so there's the box so this is made from a solid chunk of billet 70 75 70 75 there's the bearings there's the there's the main gear and then here's the three other gears and i mean there's no pits no cracks no broken no. teeth yeah i mean we haven't magged them but i i just by the just by looking at how little debris was in there we've got a magnet on the pickup and you know they they almost just look like they got polished you and know these are all straight cut gears there's yes. no helical cut there's no you know no angle to them they're straight cut and you know i felt a set of his portals before you would think there'd be a whole bunch of backlash there's not a lot like of lash hummer, in there like the hummer portals and there's no movement no, no. play it's it, just right? about right because it's not building a bunch of heat as you can see on the on the index on the tape what what that is is temperature tape and it shows how hot it got and how hot did it get during? 190 190 in King it's kind of an hours. ideal temperature for the oil that we're running like at 190 it's at its ideal temperature so you've got you know oil is temperature relevant right and yeah. so for what we're running in there which is just a 190 is totally normal for a rear end and, and yeah. gear oil or anything yeah and so you're going to get your max service life out of the bearings at that temp so the portals the custom transfer case um i mean that's kind of the the new cool technology in the car and it's working um it's no secret lots of other people have portals yeah um, lots of other people run the scx case now um so it's just an overall well-engineered, put-together car. And it's fast as hell. It's fast. And you drive it awesome. <laughs> well, yeah. it, it took a lot of effort from the team once we got the chassis back here to get everything right. Like we plumbed it all and we put all the detail work into it. And there's a lot of details. You know, we were in here for months at night getting it all sorted out. And we, we put together crazy timelines. Like on December 9th, it has to be ready to go to this. And, and November 15th, it has to be down there for wiring well, and every detail, you know? And, and having the shop here to do it all yeah, in it's, is pretty it's bitch. Awesome. And like, these are your front CVs? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, those are basically our CVs. Um, no CV failures anymore with portals ever, right? Because you're taking, what are you, your 1.4 reduction, right? Yeah, 1.45. So five. you're taking, you know, 40% stress off of it. But they are hitting faster, which is the interesting thing. So it's oh, going 45% oh. faster. So we were worried so about it. So the torque load is less, but exactly. they're spinning way faster. I didn't even think about that Yeah, part. and so, well, and I mean, it's kind of fun to think about because, you know, now boots become a massive issue. You lose Because the boot. faster a CV spins, the more heat out of the balls in the actual CV unit. Right, and so limiting but, the angles. guess, less angle less on the angle. CVs through your travel. And it's such are a- Are they pretty flat at ride height? So they're almost dead flat. Dead. We so actually, you're creating no heat at ride height. So we actually have less temperature in these than we had before with the non-portal set, and they're running 45% faster, which is You know faster, what, is I don't think I asked stat. you, how many inches is the offset on the portal? So it's four and a half inches. So you basically gain four and a half inches of ground clearance on everything. Which lets you a set arms, the car yeah. a little bit lower. And, and on most the cars, the belly, on an IFS car, the belly comes and then right at the bulkhead dips down about like four and a half IFS. inches. Yeah. So is yours totally flat now? It, it has an inch and a half of droop in there. Um, we ran six inches in the old car. And so we have about the same amount now, but the chassis angle is a lot less. So the front yeah. drive line angle is like drastically decreased. You know, it used to have to go from the transfer case down to the front diff. Yeah. And that angle was bad. Yeah. And now everything's pretty much level on the drivetrain. Nice. It's happy. Cool. Yeah. It feels like it actually has less resistance in it 
to where the car picked up speed just from having less angle, which is crazy, but it, awesome. it all makes sense, you know? Well, uh, and then, I mean, the car is fast. It'll be ready for next year. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'm stoked you let us see it with the skins off because uh, it's a work of art for sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm stoked on it. Um, Keith did a great job on building it and the guys did a great job on getting it race ready. And you know, now we just need to go run it three or four times down there in the off season and get it ready for the race next year and go see what it can really do once I get more comfortable with it. Absolutely, well thanks for showing us the shop and the uh, car. Anytime. And we'll get out of your face here. <laughs>